Longtime Trump aide Hope Hicks taking the stand Friday and bringing jurors and the rest of us into these secret meetings and discussions as the Access Hollywood tape broke. As Trump and aides assessed its damage. Hope Hicks, you see there with Donald Trump, that is a coveted post in any campaign and especially in his, someone who is up on the stage and in his ear and on the plane. And that is the role she had. So this was important testimony, including the deals to silence these women. It matters because this is reliable testimony from a longtime Trump loyalist. So that's hard for the jury to just ignore. It is also from a person as a witness who has clearly decided to cooperate with these kind of probes, to testify under oath, that that's the better course, uh, better course for Ms. Hicks. I want to mention that she did that today, but we had some context leading up to Friday's testimony because she did that in testifying about January 6th in that high stakes probe. There she was. You may remember she cooperated. She discussed what she knew under oath. She talked to investigators. She even discussed her own private text on that day, January 6th, where she told others she was so upset, quote, everything we worked for wiped away. What you see on the screen is the way we experienced different probes. January 6th, they had the cameras on and we saw her actually talking. Under New York law, it's transparent. We have the sketches, but we don't have video cameras in court. But both times, to be clear, Hicks was a key witness. She is cooperating. And that itself has led to this reported falling out with Trump, now the defendant. And she said she was nervous today from the stand. She answered the questions, confirming she's under subpoena. She's paying for her own lawyer. And in a moment that does matter for a jury, this is still a human exercise. Hope Hicks broke down crying on the stand at one point. She was seen there crying. This was reported and discussed. It was apparently, best we can tell, and from the reporters in the room and the wider context we have, a genuine display of emotion for her as she felt the weight of this moment, the raw pressure of testifying about her longtime boss who stood, or I should say sat, stood by, or physically, literally sat through her entire testimony watching her. And maybe the details were tough for her to share in this manner. Remember, Hicks went from a close aide in the Trump business to that position of campaign press secretary, a key post for a candidate obsessed with press, and while Trump has had his famous falling outs with many different aides, a lot of people didn't last through the first year of the administration, for example, she kept his trust. She eventually became White House communications director. She witnessed every Trump scandal, as The Washington Post put it, and her testimony here this week hurt Trump when she said that he had his hand in everything, that he was very involved. We were all just following his lead as she discussed the priorities of the campaign and communications. Now, why does that matter? The point isn't whether he's some apprentice-style boss or not. It's a much narrower point for the jury. It undercuts one of the Trump defenses that I've told you about. And he's entitled to his defenses. But one of them is, hey, I was out of the loop. I'm busy. I'm running for president. Other people are getting the stuff done. Well, this is Hope Hicks. This is not just nobody. And she's saying pretty much the opposite. He was hands-on. He set the lead. They followed. She also confirmed about what we heard from another witness this week, that Ronna Graff, the Trump assistant, was basically crucial. So that is corroboration. If the Trump attorneys get up and say, oh, who's this, who's that? Well, the jury's got Hope Hicks. They got the evidence. They see how senior a position she held, and she's the one corroborating these others. And another blow to Trump's efforts to find some sort of distance from the inquirer, Hicks also confirmed with her own eyewitness account that she'd seen and heard Trump talking to the inquirer chief, David Pecker, who was the witness earlier. Trump congratulating him on a phone call after the tabloid went after then-Trump rival Ben Carson. Here's what's interesting about that. At the time, in the, in the room, she knows more than most people, but she might have still thought that Trump was just working the press like usual. You call the Inquirer one day, you call Fox the next. Now, however, the jury is hearing this wider testimony and understanding this as a potential confirmation of how the tabloid was carrying out Donald Trump's campaign edicts. This wasn't like calling someone and discussing them doing their independent reporting, where you might share ideas and facts or a quote and then see what they report. This was, according to the DA, more like him calling someone who was operating publicly, commercially, sort of financially as an arm of the campaign, but doing it off the books. That's part of the crime the DA is trying to prove and why the Hicks testimony, combined with what we heard this week, was so significant. And I'll tell you, there's more. Hope Hicks also 
took the jury inside Trump world in a very unusual way. In the very private panic moments when the campaign was rocked by the video you see on your screen, the bombshell access Hollywood tape. Remember, nobody knew this thing existed at the upper echelon of the campaign, except for maybe Donald Trump might or might not remember what he said. And this isn't just any witness, as I emphasize. Prosecutors determined Hicks was actually the first person to bring the news of this impending video bombshell inside the campaign to the campaign manager to Trump. And again, you and I might remember Hope Hicks. Part of the jury might not. Not everyone memorizes every aide on every White House or campaign staff. But boy, are you going to think she's important if you determine that when the Washington Post had this bombshell, the person they went to who they knew was a top aide, who would get right to Trump and the other leaders, wasn't the campaign manager, wasn't some other friend or family member. They went to Hope Hicks, the Washington Post reporter, contacting Hicks with this impending bombshell scoop and a deadline for any campaign response they wanted to give. She rushed it to the campaign leadership. There was a palpable panic. And she testifies how the initial response was, well, you need to hear the tape to be sure, but, quote, deny, deny, deny. And she recounted how candidate Trump privately knew this was going to be a massive story. She said this was a crisis. Now, Take that in and say, okay, what are we talking about? We doing uh, campaign memories? We doing one of these documentaries where you go back and look at an old campaign? No. The point is not that Hope Hicks has fascinating and sometimes never before heard details about that pivotal campaign moment, although she does have those. The point is that she was eyewitness to Donald Trump's apparent motivation, which the prosecutors say is now part of the criminal intent in what they have indicted as this cover-up and campaign felony. Hicks testifying that Trump saw all of this as chiefly a problem for the campaign. I'm going to read to you this key passage. Sometimes the key passages are just someone saying yes or no. The prosecutor says Trump was concerned these reports could hurt his standing with voters. Hope Hicks says, quote, yes. So that's some of the strong testimony the jury heard here to end this week. And a lot of folks probably remember where you were when you first heard about this tape. And it's raw admission of grabbing women by the... And you might remember the fallout. Hicks recounting that very intense period, describing to the jury how it dominated coverage, leading up to the next big moment, which is the presidential debate. This was back with Clinton and Trump, when a lot of people thought Trump was already down. This was a body blow like no other. This is legally relevant to whether Donald Trump was, as his lawyers have suggested, either not involved, didn't know what was going on, or to the extent he was involved, it was like a personal thing, or was it a campaign thing? And so we've put together, in the context of our reporting, beyond just what Ms. Hicks said today, some of that explosive period in the campaign homestretch. Donald Trump's presidential campaign in turmoil tonight, facing withering political fallout. House Speaker Paul Ryan released this statement canceling Trump's event. I am sickened by what I heard today. Former Republican presidential nominee Senator John McCain pulled his endorsement. Saying, when the tape comes out, he drops from 41 to 38. Then on the weekend, after everybody's seen the tape, he falls through the floor. That's why they are driving the Republican Party and Donald Trump off a cliff and into the political abyss. Mitch McConnell called Trump's comments repugnant and unacceptable. You do not recover from this. This election ended. All they can say is, I am sorry. Now, it didn't end, but that was the mood. Republicans did turn on Trump in that 2016 home stretch. That kind of reaction might be a little bit politically unrecognizable today. In the last few years, we've seen entire crimes and convicted sedition and insurrection dismissed by Republican Party leaders. A reminder of how much has changed once Trump did get out from under that October scandal to go on to win the Electoral College. This all matters in the trial because it speaks to the campaign motivations that I keep mentioning to you. And Hicks was damning on that point, telling the jury that Republicans who ran Congress or had the nomination in past cycles had particularly sharply worded statements against Trump over this issue, over what he said on the tape and whether that's how he dealt with women. She mentioned, for example, Romney, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell. Prosecutors view Hicks' accounting as key to what they're still trying to prove to the jury, why Donald Trump would, in October, take such extreme, they allege criminal, 
acts in the campaign's waning weeks. He was losing party leaders. His whole campaign was panicked. His own top loyal aides saw the problem. He was losing the narrative. He was losing the press, a lot of the mainstream press. And while Trump still thought, and by the way, let's be clear, politically, this was true. He thought at the time that he did have a narrow path left to the Electoral College and to winning, he also perceived that one more story or allegation that linked up with this tape scandal would certainly do him in. A guy who has all this bluster in public, a guy who never admits to losing in private, well, according to his own aides under oath, he's a bit of a different guy. Might be why he's effective. Got to remember when you're dealing with someone like this that they do play different roles. And in private, he thought, yeah, I'm losing for sure and I'm toast if one of these stories comes out. That, prosecutors say, is how he and his campaign leadership viewed the Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal stories. Hicks confirming the DA's argument with evidence, with her eyewitness testimony, that Michael Cohen and the Inquirer had to bury both those stories and do it as a campaign plot for Trump to keep that narrow path even possibly open. Hicks asking Michael Cohen, for example, to get the tabloid publisher's number on November 5th. Remember I told you about the receipts? It doesn't matter what the jury thinks of either of the two people in this communication or even what they're doing. What matters is whether they think people have told the truth and what they've said about what happened matches the other documentation. And this is bad news for Trump because these texts are in the evidence for the jury. And this is as good a confirmation as you can get in writing between key people who were both Trump loyalists at the time going back to the tabloid chief, David Pecker. Hicks testifying, she asked because Trump wanted to speak with him, and so she connected the two of them. But she did more than that. She also connected the dots.